So today on Nation, we're going to talk about the top five ways to ruin your business. Hopefully you get five ideas that you may have known, may not have known, get a new light on. But either way, this is a good episode to follow up on and make sure you're not doing any of the things that are on the top five ways to ruin your business. What's going on guys? Jersey here. Thanks for tuning in. WCR Nation. Uh, either you're listening or watching. Either way, I truly appreciate it. If you are new, what's up? Take a look around. Hopefully you dig it and you want to go back and listen. We had like 80 episodes, so lots of shows, all half hour episodes and all the podcast platforms, and of course, YouTube. But if you want to comment, which this episode, we want you to comment hugely, if that's even a word, go to YouTube. Search this episode and comment down below. But most importantly, click the thumbs up on the video if you are on YouTube. That means the world to me. A uh, couple of quick shout outs. Kyle, uh, what's going on? Uh, Hausner? Hausner? Kyle Hausner? Kyle Hausner. <laughs> Godly, let's practice things, man. We just, what's up, Kyle? Anyway, Zach, uh, Sandral, what's going on, man? And Ryan Fuster, Fuster. Listen, guys, if I'm butchering your name, I'm not sorry because I'm not good at all the names. But you know who you are, what's going on. <laughs> if you want to get a shout out, just say what's up, leave a comment. And um, yeah, if you're one of the elites, one of the nation, the people who, um, watch every episode and of course they order their supplies through me what's going on it's because of you that uh i get to live in a house and not outside so thank you very much for that uh if you want to buy your supplies from me i genuinely appreciate it my number is 862-312-2026 please do that that's my cell so call me text me whatever but most importantly get your supplies from me that would mean the world to me. A lot of people just actually text, too. They're like, oh, I put everything in my cart. It's ready to go. Guys, if you do that, you are awesome. Because it doesn't hinder you. It doesn't change your price to have me do it. And it's just so easy for everybody. So anyway, we got a new system now. So everything is starting to run more smoothly. So sorry if you guys had hiccups on uh, windowcleaner.com the past um, week or so. Anyway, let's get into the episode. This week, we're talking about the top five ways to ruin your business. Now, here's the thing. A lot of guys said they loved the last one uh, when I did How I Almost Destroyed My Business. But I thought, well, that's cool that you guys got to hear a story, right? We're going to do more stories if you want. Comment down below on YouTube. Let me know. Um, but it's not about you. Like, how are things that you should not do, like how does it focus on you? Sure, don't buy a building before you're ready. Don't do some of that stuff. But today we're going to talk about the top five things that I think would ruin your business. And like I said, man, I am not a no one. I'm not a anybody from anywhere. I just, I'm a dude with a mic. I'm just a dude who's playing a dude. I don't know. Anyway. So take these with a grain of salt, but uh, it's fun to talk about. I love to hear your ideas again. That's why this one is going to be such a comment kind of driven thing. Even if you think your comment's dumb, comment on YouTube. But what I want to do is just basically talk about some options, and you tell me what your thoughts are on But anyway, uh, number five on the list of the top five things that I think would ruin your business is growing too fast. And that is really kind of what we talked about in the last one. And if you haven't gone back and listened to that other episode, search it out, WCR Nation episode something, but just search um, how I almost destroyed my business, that one. And it basically talked about how I, I took a jump a little bit too fast and uh, almost killed myself that way with business, right? I gave myself too many bills, basically. But what I'm talking about specifically here is those guys who say it's you and a helper. Awesome, right? High five, you guys are doing awesome. You've created something from nothing that is epic. But now that million dollar job comes by. You got that contract. Oh man, this thing's too big. It's too big for what we have, but oh, would it be nice to get that million dollars? And you bid on it and you get it and you've destroyed your business. And here's why. This does not mean growth is bad. Growth is great. Growth is good when you do it the way you're supposed to do it, or at least what you think is the best way. When you grow too fast, here's what happens. First off, you don't have the staff 
to make that contract happen, okay? Uh, no problem. I'll just hire some people. Great. But guess what? You're not going to have enough work to keep the rest of those people busy up until the point that that contract's done. If you hire or sub out guys, now you're relying on their quality, their work ethic, their image, their appearance, their whatever. You've lost a ton of control on that, hoping to get it done. Just so you can say you did that million dollar job. Right, And then what happens is you don't finish those jobs. Larger contracts a lot of the times have clauses in there that uh, will change the price if not done by a deadline. You'll get fined, that type of thing, which you don't see on smaller ones. There's jobs. I've done one where uh, for every day that it was not completed by the deadline, it was a $50, $50 charge every single day. So, yeah. That's a big chunk of change to not have it done in time. And now you have to remember, there's going to be rain. There's going to be, you know, touch-ups. You're going to have to make it perfect. You're going to have a lift. There's a ton of issues that come up that when you push yourself to doing a job that's too big for you, you're just growing too fast. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to lose the contract. You're going to tarnish your reputation. And you're going to lose a crap ton of money doing it just to go back to where you are. So here's the thing. Before that million dollar contract, find a $10,000 contract, right? Find that 15,000, right? Work your way up to where it is and grow the company to a point where it's a healthy growth. You guys have heard of the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Here's the thing. I'm gonna go cliche uh, analogies on you because I love the analogies, right? But that whole thing is tilted. And the reason it's tilted is because the foundation it was built on was wrong. Something was wrong in the ground and the way that it was laid, and it could not support what was above it. That's really what happens. Now, if you're building a skyscraper, you have to build that foundation. That sounds so cheesy, but it's real, real talk here. You can get a contract that seems a little bit bigger than you. That's huge because that's always push yourself to be better, right? That's I bike, I'm a mountain biker. Always push yourself a little bit better. That's how you get better. But don't go crazy. You grow too crazy, too fast, too... It just does not end well. So don't go and do that. It's not not good. Don't grow. If you agree or disagree, like I said, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on what should be number five, number four, number three, number two, number one. Tell me. I want to have a huge conversation. Open it up on YouTube. You got time, man. It's February. You got time? Go do it right now. Uh, number four on the list of uh, items, uh, top five that are going to ruin your business, is leaving money on the table. What do you mean by that? Here's the thing. None of us want to be jack of all trades. We don't want to pick up dog poop, uh, you know, detail cars, uh, do carpet cleaning, window cleaning, pressure washing, roofs, and also paint. Right? There are guys out there that do that, but you're a master of none. You're just a jack of all trades, right? But here's the thing, window cleaning pairs with pressure washing, right? Because you got to pressure wash before you window clean. You're doing the outside of the windows, there's the outside of the house right next to it, right? Gutters pair very well because you already got a ladder up to the window if you're not using water fed or you have ladders on the truck or whatever, right? They pair very well. If you're doing pressure washing on the siding, what about concrete? What about the roof, right? Exterior services in general. Now, I'm not talking about interior services either on the window cleaning. But they pair very, very well. And if you're not doing the right add-ons, here's what happens. Is somebody has their hand out. And said, they're not going to tell you, but it's in their brain. I have this much money, $1,000 this year. I'm going to be spending on stuff for my house, like maintenance on my house. And if you're only taking 200 of that, there's a lot of other contractors going to be taking the other money. Now, okay. Maybe you just don't get the money, but listen to the hard facts kind of on why this can affect you more than just not making as much money as you possibly can. If you don't do pressure washing and you're a window cleaner and they sub, uh, they uh, find a contractor to do the pressure washing who also does windows, guess what? It's easier for them to hire one company that does it all than somebody for every single service. Now, most of the time, when you're not in a perfect pairing like that, say it's uh, dog poop picking up or whatever. I always bring that up. No hating on you if that's what you do. But most of the time, people who do that do not clean windows also. It's not a perfect pairing. So to let that money go to somebody who does that service, awesome. But those paired services that are super close, that are add-ons in our industry, it makes a ton of sense to do that. 
You don't want to leave money on the table because you're also allowing other contractors to come in and potentially take your uh, your gig, your money, your your job for what you already do. And here's here's the truth of the matter. If you're a window cleaner, it's harder to get into pressure washing than if you're a pressure washer getting into window cleaning. If you're a pressure washer, guess what? The cost of entry is a lot higher. Your use, I mean, the the trailer rigs I have, the, the truck that has to, I have to have a flatbed truck for the equipment that's on the truck, okay? That alone costs big money compared to a simple truck, right? The uh, units themselves to have a backup, just the portable units. It's, you know, a starter kit from us is like $2,600. $2,700. That comes with the pressure washer. The That's not a lot of money in the scheme of things, but it's a lot of money if you spent $50 to become a window cleaner, right? Our starter kits and window cleaning can be $450. That's on the high end. There's, there's some even less than that. So it's very hard to go that way, but you have to understand that you're investing in yourself. And here is the cheesy analogy again, because I said it the other week and somebody really caught it, but... A lot of people have stocks, okay? Stocks are you taking your money and investing it in someone else's company. Just sit back and think about this. What if, hear me out, what if you took money and invested it in yourself instead of another company? Do you think you'd pay, pay dividends? Do you think with your drive and the type of person you are, do you think you would lose money on it? No, of course not. Easier said than done. I get it. But uh, don't leave a ton of services out there. You're just not going to have a good time. If you do, man, you're going to lose money. You're going to lose contracts potentially. So the number three way to ruin your business in the top five is keeping yourself in the field. Now, I want to preface this by you guys and gals out there who are owner operators and that's what you do. Absolutely awesome. That is not what I'm talking about. If you're out there making a dollar and keeping a dollar, that is stinking awesome. It's awesome, right? What I'm talking about is you, the people who are listening, who have employees that are out in the field doing the work, but they're also in the work. And then they come back and try to do the office stuff and then try to hopefully possibly sell some stuff to keep everybody else busy, but they're too busy to hire another person because that's why they're out in the field. Whatever that excuse is, is malarkey. It's BS. Like I said, bologna sandwich. That's what I tell my kids that means, or bull spit. But um, if you have employees and you're still out in the field cleaning glass, you're doing it wrong, in my humble opinion. And here's why. There's so much stuff. Like as business owners, we have so many hats that uh, we wear, right? We're HR, we're uh, the tax potentially, we're the advertising and marketing department. We are the, you know, face of the company. We're the CFO, CEO, and everything else in between. So the hard part is, is that you're going to go out and clean windows. That's not the most important part of your business, the running of your business, the growing of your business, the strengthening, or if you have employees, getting the work for the employees. That stuff is all getting left by the wayside because you're out in the field cleaning glass that you could have somebody else do who can't uh, do the things that you're doing uh, is anybody but you. you. You do it exactly the way that you do it, Right? Now, if you have a multi-million dollar company and you have somebody who is the CFO and all that, that's awesome, right? That's why you hired that person because they're specific to that industry, but you're still not out there cleaning glass, even if you enjoy it. Maybe do it like once a month or something. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy things a heck of a lot more when you're out of the field making work for the guys who are out in the field. There's so many things you're missing. What about website SEO? What about general free advertising, which just takes time to put your name out there on all the other platforms? Putting yourself out there, having graphics made and and changing things on the website, getting pictures up and joining nice job to get reviews and setting up with responsibility to be built into the site and uh, doing the uh, 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 send gym, right? All those programs and things that take a little bit of time to set up and do, you don't have if you're out there Cleaning, because here's what happens. After eight hours of cleaning, heck, six hours of cleaning, how much time do you really have to do the stuff that matters even more 
that you've been leaving to the wayside. That's the hardest part is to get yourself in that mindset. But that's exactly it. You run a company, okay? You don't just have a job. And again, I'm not talking to the people who are owner operators and that's what they do. Like that is the point of what you do. If you're out in the field and that's you're just out in the field, you don't have employees, you don't want employees, you're not going that route, that's awesome. That's huge. Strengthen your company the way it is. But I'm talking to those people who have employees and they're still in the field. You just you don't have more time in the day. Just because you think you're more efficient than anybody else you hire, or you think you're better, or you think that your customers won't like anybody but you, and no, oh, but my customers, you're wrong. You're wrong. Here's another thing, uh, kind of off topic, I guess. If you say the term, oh, it must work for you, but my customers are different, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're, all customers are the same. Sure, there's little quirks and things, but uh, there's no... Your area is not different. You just didn't try it hard enough to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Keep that in mind. That's why I'm going to hate mail right from that comment. Oh, well, that, it's, it is what it is. But um, get yourself out of the field. You know, Take yourself out of the truck. Make yourself as valuable as you can in the areas that you don't have somebody to do that stuff, right? If you tell these guys that you do have, if they're working eight hours a day, every single day, it's time to hire somebody anyway, because you got work that you're doing. But I'm guessing if you're in the field and they're working, they have more time to be able to fit the stuff in. Fix your scheduling. Work it so you're out of the field. If you need to start doing half days out of the field first and you know within a month's time, work yourself out of it, okay. But pulling yourself out, you're so much more valuable to yourself out of the field. You just you just are. That's a fact. Well, that's a Jersey fact. I don't know if it's really a fact, but that's a big, big thing. So comment down below, again, if you agree with these or disagree or what your thoughts are. I love hearing the conversation, guys. I really, really do. Um, number two is uh, saving money in the wrong places. So we said leaving money on the table. That's something, right? But saving money in the wrong places, and here it is. Now, people go, oh, here it is, the sales spiel. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the guys who don't buy uh, a newer truck and their other truck breaks down. Guys that don't replace a broken something on their truck, broken window or a, a, a tire and rim that doesn't match or the clothes they haven't bought new apparel in, in years. All those things that they think they're saving money on is not saving money. It's killing the vibe. It's killing the image. It's killing your business that way. You have to uphold a certain thing. I know guys who will go out there and buy a 40-foot ladder because it's cheaper than getting into pure water. That is just mind-blowing to me. How would, why, would you, why would you work even more dangerously if you could get the tool? It just it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of that kind of stuff out there where... Maybe not all stuff is in the budget, and I get why you're saving, but image is one. Not having, I haven't updated my marketing material in five years. It's just so expensive. That's dumb. I haven't gotten a new website. I'm still running an Angel Fire, my sp or what is uh GeoCities. <laughs> GeoCities. I'm still running one of those sites because they're just so expensive. I have an SEO, man. I'm just hopefully working. To those are such dumb things. Invest in yourself instead of investing in others. That's the biggest thing. What You telling me that if you don't have a little bit of cheddar in the busy time of spring, when you're just cash rich, swimming in it like, like, like uh, ducktails, if you're not, you're doing something wrong or you have too many hobbies or... Uh, you're doing too many drugs. That might be it. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe you have a. Uh, maybe you're also a mountain biker and you spend too much money on uh, carbon fiber things. Maybe. But either way, you have to invest in yourself, and that's really it. Is don't save money for the fact of saving money. It's not save. You're not buying a new TV because you got a TV. I'm saving my money. No, investing in yourself means you'll have better business. Now look at this. If you had, if I gave you hundred thousand dollars right now. And you had to put it into your company. Five years from now, it would be a hundred times bigger than it is now. More stronger, builder, because you built it today. 
What if I give you that $100,000 two years ago? It would be that much bigger, right? Investing in yourself helps everything grow. It helps it strengthen. Even if you're not growing, you're strengthening. That's the point of this. You're making a healthy company, a company that may work on its own or run on its own. And you may be able to pull yourself out a little bit more, go on more vacations, maybe get a mountain house. Who knows? An ocean house that you spent a few weeks on, right? Steve-O, right now, you've heard of Steve-O? Yeah. Steve-O is in the Philippines just hanging out for like a month. Why? Because he's gotten that business. His business is strong. That's a big thing, right? So saving money in the wrong places is going to hinder you in other places. Now, should you buy, there is actually a carbon fiber squeegee handle that was made by Unger for a while. Uh, it was like their special edition something, something. Should you go and buy that? No, come on. You know what I'm saying, right? You're saving money in the wrong places thinking you're saving the money. Spend it on image. Image is huge. Think of the people you hire, right? Think of, of companies you see driving around. Think of your competition. What do they drive? If they got the newest, nicest wrap things. You look at it and go, oh, those guys. Those guys. They must be so busy to be able to afford that. That's the image. The image is clean. They hire, get hired over somebody's with, you know, dented, rusted trucks. And, uh, you know, 40-foot wooden ladders. It just doesn't make sense. So investing in yourself is so much better than saving money in the wrong places. That's number two on the list of the top five ways to ruin your business. The number one way, in my opinion, to ruin your business is only looking for new clients and not taking care of your old ones. This is the number one area that all of you fail in, and I haven't even seen your business. We're all so focused on getting the new clients. We're focused, oh, he's got to get new, so I got to sell, 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 get new, and that is huge. You need to sell. You sell or you die. But here's the thing. What about the thousand clients you have? What have you done for them? Like, clean their windows and send them an email. And what have you done for them? Do you think that there's a possibility that you could do something little that would remind them that you appreciate them? Damn Skippy. (laughs) Something so stinking simple, right? What's your average ticket? Your average ticket is, we'll say $249, right? Right? $200, $200, whatever it is, you probably know that number. What if you spent an extra, and that's not just once a year. Some of those people go way more than that. But what if you went and got all your clients, your residential clients? What if you got um, a $5 uh, gift card to Starbucks and just sent them a card? Okay, I just want to remind you that we appreciate you. Or something completely unsalesy, Right? Not here's a gift card. Remember us when it comes to time to clean your windows. That's not what the point is. The point is to remember them, just to do something nice for them. Just to keep your focus on them. They have to remember you exist, not only when it's time for dirty windows. Now, you don't have to send a gift card. You don't have to do that. You could do something else. You could um, send a letter of your um, family with a picture in there. And the letter states... uh, that I just want to thank you for, you know, letting us uh, service, you know, do service for you, however you want to word it. I just want to show you, you know, where your, um, you know, local business has gone. This is my family. These are my kids. This is what's going on. You know, the oldest one's playing flute now. It's crazy. And just writing like a weirdly genuine letter. I don't know if that worked. I never did that. It was off the top of my head. But something like that is big time. Doing calls twice a year is also helpful. When you genu- actually call and say, hey, I'm putting together a schedule. I haven't seen you in there, and I thought maybe I'd get... That's salesy, but it's genuine, right? Do a call list twice a year just to let people know. Talk to them. There's a lot of things that you can do. Here's the thing. It is so much cheaper. There's a statistic somewhere. I just don't know it. But it's so much cheaper to keep someone happy than to get someone new always, right? So why not focus on that? Why not spend a little bit more money or attention to do that? And it will come back to you tenfold. It really, really will. 
It strengthens your company. These people already, they've already said yes to you. It's so much easier to say somebody that has already used your service to be like, hey, we want to reschedule you. Oh, yeah, sure. They don't have to be sold again. They don't have to trust you. They trust you now because they got it. That's the most valuable person you have are the existing customers. When you forget about that and you spend 10 times more effort to get new ones than, you know, a tenth of the effort to keep those ones happy, maybe coming back, to remind them of you to keep the services alive and make sure they're always happy, right? So maybe you do calls every quarter and just say, hey, it's fall. Hey, it's spring. Hey, it's summer. We got great summer specials. Something like that just to keep active with those people is huge. A lot of people fail at that. A lot of people fail at that. I know I did for a lot of years. You just don't even look at like the turnaround. Like, I got a 90% retention, 75% retention, whatever it is those other 25% of people, sure, people die, people leave, move out of state, whatever, but all of those people didn't do that. You don't have 100% retention of somebody who's still alive and in their same house. You lose people, but why? Why did you lose people? What if just by asking somebody, would you like fries with that, right? Asking somebody for that kind of extra, calling somebody every six months, like, hey, I just thought I'd see, you know what, usually I only do it in spring, but, uh, yeah, you know what? Heck, let's do it. Like, how much more money would you be able to generate? How much more strengthened relationships with these people would you have if you just contacted them an extra time or reached out or, you know, kind of did that? Focusing on the existing ones is is more important than the getting new clients, right? Because here's the thing. Let's 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 be honest. Always be selling because you will lose people. That's 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 huge. I, I mean, selling and getting new people is is very, very important also. But there's a lot of guys out there who don't advertise. I know a really good friend of mine. doesn't ever, He hasn't advertised in 20 years. He's completely full, completely booked all the time. And it's because his relationship with those people are so good. Like, that's huge. That's a healthy company. If he decided to scale, just imagine where that would be if he wanted to hire a bunch of employees and 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 make this this giant thing he'd be it'd be a piece of cake cuz he's got the strong base let me know what you think cuz maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong i could very well be wrong and people usually don't have a problem telling me i'm wrong and i'm sorry i'm so nasally but i'm in the south and our pollen is dropping and i'm trying not to sneeze this whole dang time but hey if you're on instagram and you're still listening follow me on instagram it's at @jersey WCR Nation. Just follow me. That'd be awesome. If you're still listening, comment on YouTube. Go over there. If you're on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, or any of the podcast platforms, please give us a review. That helps me. And uh, most importantly, buy your supplies through me. That would be epic. Even if you just go shop, create an account at windowcleaner.com, throw it all in your cart, let me know. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it sure does help me out. So I genuinely appreciate that. Until next week, go out there, make sure to comment, don't ruin your business, and be epic.